G'day Ziggy D here and today I have with me a special guest, a man who really knows his way around a calculator, Moldrin. How are you going Moldrin? Hey Ziggy D. There's the nice calculator. <laughs> Good yeah. stuff. Yeah, nice to meet Showing you my too, calculator. Mate. This That's is what our... I'm famous for. That's it. You are you are one of the hardcore theory crafters. For those of you guys who happen to not know Moldrin, he is a hardcore Diablo 3 theory crafter, streamer, and YouTuber. And I'll put those links down in the description below so you can check out his content. But uh, pretty cool stuff all around. And today we're going to be talking about the auction house, the decision by Blizzard to remove the auction house uh, come March 18th, 2014. Pretty huge decision, it seems, and uh, it's going to have some interesting implications and a few things we can talk about, I think. Uh, Moldrin seems to enjoy a good rant about this, and he seems pretty keen on this idea as well, so let's uh, let's jump into it. First up, I just want to ask you, mate, uh, what do you think was Blizzard's main motivations behind removing the auction house? Well, I think there are mostly two main reasons for the removal of the auction house. The first one is Blizzard really wants to sell a lot of copies of the expansion pack, so it's kind of like a business decision. How can we sell more copies of Diablo 3? And I think the auction house was one reason why many people quit the game in the first place. And like announcing this now to remove it is probably going to bring a lot of people back. Because now they're going to give Diablo 3 a second chance that they otherwise wouldn't have given. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely it's, one of the yeah. reasons. Yeah, I agree. It seemed like a huge marketing decision to me. Mm -hmm. Especially because um, with Blue 2.0 coming and the announcement of the ladder system, both of those things together, it seemed like yeah. the auction house was going to be kind of irrelevant anyway. So the decision to remove it didn't seem like a huge gameplay change, but it's still a huge image change for the game. Yeah. That's at least what I thought, yeah. Uh, what exactly. about what about botting? Like, we had a recent botting ban wave uh, today or yesterday, and uh, it's affected gold prices and everything. Do you think that factored in the decision at all? Um... I don't think it mainly did because bots are always going to be there and it's hard to deal with them. But I think the synergy between all changes, the synergy between the loot changes, the auction house changes and everything fits together and it's going to make botting a, loss, a lot less useful. Yeah, well, it so seems it's like, like we'll a side effect of removing the auction house. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It seems like we'll be moving away from the uh, gold economy a bit. Uh, after the removal of the auction house, after all, yeah. it's, it's only really a part of the economy now because it's such an efficient way to trade with on the auction house. So, exactly. uh, what do you think? Uh, bot, bots will play, you know, a big role in uh, Reaper of Souls. Um, I think they're definitely going to be less useful because of the combination of all changes. Like there is going to be more account bind gear, and this in itself already reduces the value of bots. And same with the reduction of the value of the gold price. Like, I think gold won't be that valuable in the expansion. I think it's going to be more about player-to-player -player trading, like item for item, rather than using gold as a currency. Yeah, that's it. Um, interesting about the account-bound stuff, because I saw the account uh, binding of a bunch of items that we just started to get as a kind of a band-aid solution to issues presented by the auction house. And I'm kind of actually hoping that we move away from account-bound items in Reaper of Souls, but you don't think that'll happen? Um... Not at all. I think they tested with the demonic essences, the account ban items, and then the feedback on demonic essence and crafting was very positive. And I think they're gonna further increase the account ban items. Yeah, that's a shame because I was kind of hoping that we might see some sort of uh, the items that are account bound now in the expansion pack. We st see some sort of trade economy happening around those because we're gonna need like a new interesting medium for trade and something like the equivalent of demonic essences in Reaper of Souls would make a nice trade. Like uh, with the Nephilim trials, you know how you get an item that opens that essentially, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. like having that as a trade item, like having that be able to uh, translate over into you know. I, I ran a uh, Nephilim trial and I got a sick piece of loot from it. And you got you can't just go to an auction house and buy that sick piece of loot. So maybe you trade me three of your Nephilim trial runs and uh, then you get you know that sick piece of loot. That's I thought that would have been interesting, but mm. it depends on how they go with the count binding, I guess. Yeah. Well, there's also another system. This um, there hasn't been much talking about it yet, but it was state mind This card game type of stuff. We have to bring together various pieces from different acts and then you get this card. Yeah, that was uh, Devil's Hand, I think it was yeah. called. That seems pretty interesting. I like the uh, whole, yeah. you have this piece of loot here, or you have the second hidden one, and you have to make a decision. You want to take the thing you know, or the thing you don't know? You know, you yeah, want to exactly. take the hidden box, the mystery box? <laughs> pretty exciting. But uh, yeah, it seems like we're going to have a ton of different ways to get loot. So kind of on that note, uh, what do you think were the main problems with the auction house for, for players from like a player perspective? Mm -hmm. Well, I think most people quit the game in the first few weeks. Or even in the first few days of playing the game. That's when Diablo 3 went from 10 million players to, I don't know, 2 million mm. in like one or two weeks. And that's where the game received a lot of negative feedback. 
And I think the reason for that was because when the game initially came out with the super hard Inferno difficulty, to be able to progress through Act 1 or Act 2 or Act 3, you needed to have gear from like Act 3 and Act 4. So you would get to Act 1 Inferno, but you wouldn't be able to progress because you needed gear that other people find in Act 3 or Act 4. So yeah. it was really hard yeah. for players to progress through Inferno, and then you would get to Act 2 and everything is like even 10 times harder. So the problem was that the only way back then to make or progress is actually to buy gear on the auction house, or e in some cases even spend money. Because yeah. there was a lot of value in the room in auction house. And I think they're going to fix this now with the itemization and the removal of the auction house. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, um, I've spoken to a few people and I even remember um, Force, who was one of the guys on YouTube who was really promoting yeah. the game, like hawking the game a year up to release, said yeah. uh, he quit after about two weeks after, you know, a year's lead yeah, up exactly. of making content. And he said after he first spent his first dollar in the real money auction house, it just the game stopped being fun from that point onwards. So I think it did have a big like mental effect on a lot of people. But uh, I also think they uh, kind of hinted at it in the re we're removing the auction house video that they did where they said um, uh, it kind of cuts through the reward loop. In an action RPG, you know, you, mm -hmm. you kill stuff and then something drops and that something, you know, might be sometimes an upgrade and that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Rewards right there. But with the auction house, you're like, get a drop that's probably not good for you. You're like, eh, it might be worth some gold, chuck it on the auction house. Two days later, you get your gold, you save up your gold, mm -hmm. then you get an upgrade. There's your reward, like, days later. <laughs> so, yeah. it's even like a kind of kind of reward in that as well. So, the uh, yeah, the mental aspect and the cutting through that reward loop seemed like a pretty huge issue. So, um, yeah. the, the problem with the auction house, like, it's too efficient, huh? Like, it just cuts through that. It's like, it's the best way to, for anyone to really progress in the game. But, yeah. uh... Going back to, uh, you know, Diablo 2 days or even myself playing a lot of Path of Exile recently, uh, trade chat trading can uh, be pretty rough. Uh, how do you feel about moving back to a system like that? Mm, well, it depends. Like, and you know, there's a lot of scamming going on and stuff. But usually I think trading is a lot of fun if you do it in communities like forums and stuff. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to be allowed, but I traded a lot in forums in Diablo 2. Not on DJSP, but on a German forum, because I played in Germany. But, I don't know, it was really fun. Like, we used in Diablo 2 Classic, we used a currency named Stone of Jordan. The ring, and, yeah, yeah it was pretty fun. Yeah. Every item had a value in terms of Stone of Jordan. And that was back then, before the dupers and everything came into the game. It was like in the first year of the game. Yeah, I have to agree with you that it can actually be pretty rewarding when you do make a trade. Uh, through that because you actually you know you jump into someone's game maybe you have a little chat maybe you even add yeah. each other to the friends list and have a bit of a runoff or something like that afterwards yeah. and it, uh, it really builds the community whereas the auction house does no community building whatsoever <laughs> but, yeah, uh, you don't even know like who was the seller yeah in yeah the yeah house. it's there's no connection there at all it's completely inhuman but uh yeah. i guess i guess on that note like compared to like the efficiency of the auction house and the inefficiency of the trade chat system do you think we need like an alternative trading system uh to the auction house or do you think that's something blizzard might announce at blizzcon a lot of people have been speculating that might be the case mm, it's hard it depends on how the enter loot system is going to work depends on how much is going to be buying an account how much can be traded mm. is there going to be a cell phone mode there's all questions that have to be answered first before we can really answer the question in detail yeah there's i know a lot of people yeah. for example there was on reddit a post about this shared stash tabs i didn't look into it myself yet but it sounds like a good idea yeah yeah i was um thinking about that as well it's an idea that's been suggested for the future part yeah. of exile the guys are planning out where they basically you have a publicly browsable stash tab and you put your loot in there people can see that but they can't buy it from there and you can't list a price mm -hmm. in there they're just like He's, he has this item he wants to sell it. it's what i want then I send him a message and you do all the normal trading thing, but just a little bit more efficient. And, you know, they could do that sort of thing on Bnet and you could link link that on yeah. different community sites and stuff. Well, that seems like it could be a good medium, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I mean, cool. I played an MMO 10 years or 15 years ago named Pristondale and they had a system where um, you would basically open a cash shop in-game. You could list your items there, for example, a weapon for 1 million gold then a stone for 200,000 gold and people could just click on it and they would see all the items that they currently offer. And then they could buy whatever they want. That actually reminds me, there was like a community, uh, you know, a fan-made announcement for the expansion pack quite a while back. And he said that there would be a separate realm you could go back to that would be like this kind of public uh, server yeah. of like 500 people or something like that. And you could yeah. open your store in there. That would be pretty fun. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we might move into like, you know, runes RuneScape uh, days there where you kind of just, most of the time you're in-game sitting there trying to uh, get people to come to your shop and buy stuff. But... <laughs> but <laughs> 
that's usually what people do. Like you play the game at day, you play 12 hours a day, and then at night when you go to sleep or when, when you go uh, to school, you leave your cash shop open. Yeah, have it be so somewhat that's basically automated. the idea behind it. Yeah, yeah, that, that could be interesting to see in uh, Diablo. It'd be certain, certainly something new for an action RPG. It's something I haven't really seen in the genre before. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, what if, what effects? Next question I'll ask you. What effects do you think uh, this will have on the way you play Reaper of Souls? The way you play the game in the Reaper of Souls. I know that in the past you've uh, done quite well on the auction house, to say the least, mm -hmm. and you've made like a lot of uh, a lot of guides and a lot of streamers do yeah. things like budget builds and giveaways around the auction house. How do you think it'll change the way you play and stream come Reaper mm -hmm. of Souls? Well, I'm a business student, so I always did well in the mm. auction house <laughs> yep. as well as economics, but. Um, I think it's important to decide first if you want to be a ladder player or a non-ladder player in the expansion. Because if you're going to be a non-ladder player, um, things are going to be different. Personally, I'm going to be a ladder player, so as soon as the first ladder hits, which probably will be when the expansion launches, yeah. I'm going to jump into the ladder mode and everything is going to be reset. Like The ladder mode equals a full economy reset. So everyone starts from zero, there's going to be no bots, so ev everything is going to be self-found in the first few days or weeks and yeah I think um, trading um, I don't know how important it's gonna be I think what is gonna be very important is to have a group of friends that you can mm. play with and trade items between each other for example let's say a group with one demon hunter one barb one crusader one monk and you always play with each other and then you can also share items with each other yeah that would be awesome um Something I was actually thinking about in regards to the whole streaming thing and the giveaways now, you kind of look at giveaways now and you know they're nice, some people like them, but it's like you, you give away some items and they're like, yeah, I could go get that sort of thing for 50k gold on the auction house, like it's not yeah. really a big deal. But uh, in Reaper of Souls with no auction house, having viewers come along on your runs and giving items that you get, sick items that you get mm -hmm. there away, seems like it'll yeah. be much more, you know, much more fun and impactful. I think uh, it could be a pretty good change for the streamers, I think. It could be something you could get into there. Uh, it depends. I think some streamers can exploit that stuff because a streamer they are kind of like a personality with many viewers, and there was the same problem that when Diablo 3 original came out, some people crafted items of viewers and charged a ridiculous fee to craft those items. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So basically, what streamers were doing is um, crafting at a very low chance for a good item. For example, crafting gloves, one in ten thousand would be trifecta. And what some streamers were doing is. They were crafting 10,000 items of viewers, charging a very high fee, and they were showing them, look what I crafted, this is my reference, and they only showed the good items. So a lot of people are thinking, oh, this is my way to get rich, this is my way to get the best item, this is my way to sell something for really high, but in reality, 99% of the crafted items were bad. So basically, yep. the streamers abused the fact that they are famous and have a lot of viewers to make some easy gold for themselves by charging that ridiculous crafting fee. Well, I think the answer is that uh, scumbags are always going to be scumbags, whether there's an auction house or not. <laughs> yeah. But um, how will you be preparing for the uh, transition away from the auction house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I saw that you had like it's two billion or something gold on there and some uh, some Blizz mm -hmm. bucks. Uh, are you going to be buying anything in advance for Reaper of Souls? Are you going to be selling everything, cashing out? What's uh... your plan? Secrets. Share them. As I said, I'm going to play ladder <laughs> mode, so I don't really care about the current game mode right now. Yep. So you're just going to uh, cash out the A lot the of people box? ask me what they should do now. Mm. And it's really hard to decide. I think the gold price is going to drop in the future, even though it went up again today by like 50 cents because of the band wave. But I think ultimately the gold price is going to drop because there won't be a demand for it anymore. Because a lot of people are going to play the ladder mode. And that's especially going to be true on the first day because all the people that come back to playing the game, they're all going to play on ladder because no one who quit Diablo one year ago is going to start on the existing system. They all want the full reset. Yeah. So I think then this will lead to at least 90 or 95% of their player base playing in the ladder mode and the ladder mode is going to have the new economy. Yeah, yeah, so, that's, that's it. Um, I, I suspect, yeah... It's kind of hard to decide what will actually be worth taking with you. If you still want to play the Legacy Ladders, for example, what will be worth taking with you? And I'm thinking things like uh, that are just a hassle would probably be good to invest in. Like uh, we've got, say, you know, to craft a, you know, the highest level gem, you have mm -hmm. to, you know, do a couple thousand gem crafts yeah. or something like that. It's ridiculous. So I think yeah. maybe now before, before Reaper of Souls and before they drop the uh, auction house might mm -hmm. be a good idea to uh, stock up on a few gems and, you know, a few things like that. Yeah. We might need some gold. It might be a bit harder to get gold because there won't be an mm -hmm. auction house to sell your stuff. So maybe but having was... some gold. With... 
But I was thinking about was Ruby gems because Ruby gems gonna go up in demand because of two different reasons that are separate from each other. One reason is the Crusader class, which is strength based and is certainly gonna take advantage of that strength gems. And the second reason is a lot of people come back playing the game and they want to get an experienced gem in the helm to like level faster to 70, to level the Paragon faster. So that's gonna increase the value of Ruby gems. But on the other hand, why it's still a risky move is Right now, a lot of people could be stocking up on ruby gems, yeah. kind of like what happened <laughs> with brimstones. Like everyone stocked up on brimstones, and then when they actually were worth something, everyone sold them, so they were actually worth less because everyone wanted to get rid of them, just to get even half of it what they paid for. And the second um, reason why this is not a guaranteed um, cash cow is, what happens if, for example, radiant star ruby gems drop? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this would destroy the price of them or destroy the value of them and you could stock up now invest a lot of money and then sit on the gems not being able to sell them yeah it's, it's a little so bit I early think everything too, is huh? very risky now. yeah it's it's pretty pretty risky you know it's, it's always the question now is it is like it's they're going to be valuable but is everyone investing in the same thing you know is there just going to be a shit ton of them <laughs> as soon as free for souls comes but uh I expect that we will see some high-level gem trading going on just because of the simple fact that it takes a long time to craft them and uh, people will want yeah. to bypass that. So we might see, you know, people trade a few high-level rubies for a sick item or something like that. But yeah. uh, that I think we might see some of that. But yeah, not too not too much. Um, I think in terms of my preparation, I'll probably just be getting having a little stockpile of gold so I can do some craftings and some geared mm -hmm. gambling in Reaper of Souls and uh, having those gems and maybe some crafting mats and things like that set aside. But, uh, so you actually don't plan to play the ladder mode? Uh, I, I think I do, but I think I want to, because uh, I'm going to get it, all my characters to 60 and, uh, you know, get some Paragon levels mm -hmm. and all that jazz. But uh, I want to test, test out all the new skills on all the new characters when the uh, expansion mm -hmm. comes out. So I want to have a bunch of 70s. So I will play Legacy for at least like a month or something like that and then mm -hmm. switch over to ladders. But uh, that's, my, yeah, that's my personal I plan. I think you can test the skills on the PTR. Yeah, I kind of hope so. I'm actually really wondering... They won't make the same mistake again and only test like 1% yeah. <laughs> of the game with the PTR. Half of, half of Act 1 normal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that actually wasn't a mistake. Like From a business point of view, that was actually the best decision ever. Because if they would have let you test the entire game, like before the original release, a lot of people wouldn't have bought Diablo 3 in the first place. Yeah, because Diablo... Like the, the beta was insane. The beta was amazing up to the skeleton. Yeah, thing. yeah. That's what Because then that's you didn't realize saying, the yeah. problems. You didn't realize the problems with the auction house. There's no end game, the lack of end game. And also like the Super Hard Inferno where you can't progress. Those problems weren't part of the beta. The beta was just a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. That's a, it's they only a... showed you like they only showed you good stuff with the beta, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, people were pretty hyped from that beta. It was a, it was a lot of fun yeah. uh, running through that multiple times. But uh, a little bit off topic, but I am kind of curious about what they will show in the PTR for Reaper Souls. Like they're kind of gonna have to have end game content in there for us to test it and uh, to test the new skills. We're gonna have to at least have mm -hmm. sixty to seventy content. And then you know what about the Crusader? How do you go about leveling a Crusader? Do they just give you a level sixty one or something to test? Like, <laughs> is it going to have the whole game in there? Like, I can't imagine how they can mm. limit it. Well, it's... I don't know, it's just speculation right now, so... Yeah, <laughs> that's can't it. I really talk about that. Just something I'm curious about. Off topic anyway. But uh, do you have any uh, final comments on the auction house? Or did you want to pull some questions from stream? We are streaming uh, on the stream at the moment. Yeah, I'm going to do both, actually. Um, now first, about the first question, where I said, um, where you asked me about the reasons Blizzard had to remove the auction houses. Yep. And I said one reason is um, a business reason to like, sell more copies and stuff, but I think another reason is also the reputation of the company. I think Blizzard as a company, mm. they want to make or want to have and maintain a good reputation. And up until Diablo 3, I think Blizzard received positive reputation for every game they made. Like Warcraft 3 was insane, Starcraft 1 was insane, the old Diablos, World of Warcraft was the most successful MMO. And then with Diablo 3, that kind of like was the first game where they received negative publicity, negative press. I think the Amazon rating was 2.4, which yeah. is like <laughs> terrible for games. And I think they really want to like, increase the reputability of the company again. Yeah, like Diablo 3 kind like of they became realized a running that Diablo joke, didn't Diablo 3 wasn't what they should have been. They realized their own mistakes. Yeah. And they really want to make the game like really good now. And that's, I think, also one reason why they re changed the Titan development team of the next generation MMO from 100 people to 30 people because they wanted additional staff to work on Diablo 3 because that's where they need it right now. Yeah, yeah, like that's it. You see, if all yeah. the things that they planned for the expansion, there's a complete new team working on it. 
Blizzard's definitely about the company and like their rep affects all of their game sales so definitely makes sense from a PR perspective and I, I have seen like the shift in views from people that were like you know the auction house was the one reason I thought the game was a joke I might actually go ahead and buy Reaper of Souls now because it's been removed so uh, definitely a good PR move that's for sure mm. so do you have Are any still in the stream chat then you can get the questions yourself yeah I, mean, I can uh, jump over there we'll give that a go mm. So uh, we're taking questions, guys. So chuck those in there, and we'll try and pull some out. That the grab. Feel free to grab any yourself, Maldrin. Uh, Voria wants to know what the uh, what we think the new currency will be. Like, what will be the new primary currency? We kind of brushed on that a little bit in the video. What do you think? Mm, that's actually really hard to say right now. It could be that one item turns out to be the currency, like in Diablo 2 Classic with the Stone of Jordan. I don't think it's going to be gold. I yeah, don't think gold is no. going to have a big value or a big impact. I think gold is going to be more like a side thing that you use for repair bills and maybe crafting, but it won't have a big impact. Like, there won't be a difference between someone who has 100 million gold and someone who has mm. 10 billion gold, I think. Yeah, I suspect it's going to be like and, D2, where every now and then you just trade for a bulk so you can throw some at Geet or something like that. Yeah, but, but it I also depends on like the new systems, the, mm. um, the Phelan trials where you need materials for, or the what's the other thing called? The card game? The... Uh, Devil's Hand, I think it is. The Devil's Hand, yeah. Um, if the materials for those can be traded, then those might also be, or could also turn out to be a main currency. Yeah, I think that's the really key point, Especially depending on how they go for yeah. account binding. Uh, if you can trade like the things that open up loot runs or Nephilim Trials, then they mm. will be the main currency because that directly equals more potential for loot. And people like yeah. to you know, gamble and that sort of thing, so it'll be a good trade currency. It'll be like gambling, trading unid legendaries now, kind yeah. of, I guess. Another candidate for trading or trade currency could be like the super high level gems that come with the expansion. Like the highest level gem is going to have a very high value. Yep, yep, that's it. Could also be, and they take an le extremely long time to craft. So, uh, you know how long it takes to craft the Radiant Star Ruby? <laughs> yeah. How long it's going to take to craft the, I don't know how they're going to call it, let's call it Super Star Ruby. Which <laughs> is five tiers above that. <laughs> super Star, Supernova Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Enjoy420. Blaze it. <laughs> uh, Ziggy D and uh, Muldrin, will D3 Reaper of Souls be a Path of Exile killer? What do you reckon, Muldrin? Have, have you played much Path of Exile? Um, I haven't played the game yet, uh, mostly because of a lack of time. But yeah. I think very highly of the game. Like, I made a video about it, entirely positive review. And I think the player base of Path of Exile and Diablo is actually pretty similar. And I'm pretty sure that Path of Exile is going to hit or uh, experience a hit in player numbers when Diablo 3 launches. Like a lot of people like action RPGs and many of them play Path of Exile now. So I definitely think, especially when Diablo 3 launches, a lot of people are gonna play it. Yeah, uh, for, for myself, I think uh, Path of Exile is an amazing game. It's gonna be one I'm probably gonna play for the next decade. I kind of liken it mm -hmm. very much to Diablo 2, whereas Diablo 3 is kind of a different beast entirely. I suspect I'll be playing both a lot. But uh, Diablo 3 yeah. Reaper of Souls is getting a lot of stuff that uh, PoE has as its competitive advantage at the moment. And if they do go all the way with ladders and turn that into races as well, Path of mm -hmm. Exile racing communities, that's like a big part of that game. If they start having races in Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls, yeah, Path of Exile will be in a little bit of trouble then. And uh, Blizzard's mm -hmm. not shy about poaching ideas from other games either, which isn't a bad thing. You know, if it makes the game better, I'm happy. So yeah. uh, maybe they will. And... Uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit rough on Poe, but I think Poe is always gonna be around as a pretty niche but awesome game. It's significantly mm -hmm. different enough in its core gameplay, I think. So it'll yeah, it'll live. Uh, so beast beastly QT <laughs> beastly cutie, asks, um, he's kind of asking about whirlwind bard and whether it's worth investing gold. I want to kind of turn that twist that question into like a general question. That's a probably pretty pertinent. Um, just mm -hmm. up, like. Is it worth buying much gear? How much gear is it worth investing in now in the lead up to Reaper of Souls? I think mm -hmm. that's something a lot of people want to know. Okay, so for, for that question, I assume that people want to play the non ladder mode, or at least yep. play yeah. the non ladder mode in addition to ladder mode. And I think investing into gear right now is probably th not worth it. Simply for the fact that we have seen a few level 70 items, and they're going to be much better than everything that's in the game right now. So I think it's not going to take more than a few days to upgrade even, let's say, a 10 billion gold barb right now. So on the other hand, you have the cheap prices right now because since a few weeks ago, since they announced the expansion, since they announced the ladder mode, prices have been going down for good barb gear. So I think you can take advantage of the cheap barb gear now and gear up now just to get a small head start when the game launches. 
Yeah, yeah. It's going to it's going to be a very minor difference I think. Mm. I cuz I you know to take on the 60 to 70 content, I think you're only going to need like or probably more likely 60 to 65 when you start finding your own upgrades. Yeah. I think you're only going to need like uh, MP1 gear, really. <laughs> so yeah. if you've got anything better than that, then you probably don't really need to invest. The question is really, do you, how much do you want to farm between now and then? Do you want to do efficient Paragon mm. leveling? And that's what's going to be your answer in terms of whether you should invest anything now in gear. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't see who asked that one, but I did see it fly by. Someone uh, asked whether like the ladder systems will split up uh, this is a little bit different to the auction house, but I think it's an interesting question. How much do you think like the issue of splitting up the community will be between ladders and non-ladders and all that jazz? Mm -hmm. But as I said, like if you would do a poll, like asking the current existing players, like players who have, for example, multiple Paragon 100 characters, um, if they want to play the ladder mode or the non-ladder mode, I think it could be like more around 50-50, that 50% yep. of ex ex existing player actually want to stay in the current game and don't care about ladders because they invested so much time in the game already. Maybe they even invested money. And, you know, if you invest 2,000 hours, you don't just want to, like, let this go away immediately because in ladder, yeah. it would be zero hours. Worth. Yeah, especially now and that we're kind of coming, we're doing the changeover to having ladders yeah. from not having them. I think there will be a big but portion that play Legacy. But if you look at it from a bigger picture, from, like, all the returning players to Diablo 3, and not just the returning players, which is 9 million players, they quit the game already, but also like players who never played Diablo 3 before, but are going to play it because there's going to be a lot of hype around it when the expansion comes out. I think if you look at the entire game from the big picture, I think more than 90 or 95% are going to play ladder. Ah, okay. If someone yeah. who quit the game for one year, he's not going to start in the existing yeah. system, but he's going to be at a big disadvantage. You know? That's, uh, he's going to start from zero. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, th I think uh, more so than anything, you're not really going to notice any community division because uh, we're going to have so many more players playing the game in general and the community is going to be much stronger because we're going to be trading with each other and doing all these other interactive things instead of, you know, auction houses and lonely uh, solo farming in Diablo 3 at the moment. But <laughs> So I think we won't notice any other problems. So I'll pull, like, one more question and then we'll tie things off. Is Ziggy D Australian? Yes, but that's not the question. I will answer that, yes. <laughs> it would be easier. <laughs> Just because people keep asking me that, no, there are no kangaroos in Austria. <laughs> yes, Austria and Australia. <laughs> they're, very, they're very similar. All right, well, uh, here's one. Speculations for BlizzCon uh, announcements regarding Reaper of Souls. I do expect myself that um, we will see something announced as an alternative trading system. I think Blizzard won't be able to handle going from... Because uh, I think they were very optimistic about the auction house and how good it was going to be. So I think they're going to try and go for something else and maybe we'll see something like stash tabs or in-game stores. I think we'll see something announced about that. What do you think we'll see announced at Reaper of Souls? Uh, BlizzCon, sorry. Mm, it's hard to say. I think it's mostly going to be details to what they have announced already. Like they announced, for example, loot runs or the Felum Trials or the third thing with the cards which I always forget the name, Devil's Hand or something. Yeah. What about They PvP? haven't really announced details about it. And the BlizzCon is going to show the details. Yeah, And sure. another thing is, the BlizzCon is going to probably give us the ability to test level 70 skills. I would love so maybe that. Maybe they're going to have pre-made characters. And <laughs> That'd be awesome. I, I wish I could go. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to go? I'm going, and it's yeah. going to be the best time of my year. Yeah, it will, it will be awesome. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to watching the live stream, at least. But uh, yeah. I think, I think that about... Did you the virtual ticket yet? Yeah, yeah, I'll get the virtual ticket, <laughs> for sure. Get my in-game Diablo 3 goodies as well. So that was yeah. pretty fun, man. I really enjoyed doing the podcast mm -hmm. thing, and uh, it was good hearing your insights on the auction house. I think everyone else enjoyed it as well. I look uh, forward to putting the video out. So we'll do some. We'll just mm -hmm. do some quick shout-outs. Uh, pimp out your stream and YouTube and Twitter and such for uh, my viewers. Um, yeah, my, my name is Moldren, so you can find that on Twitch and YouTube. And shout-outs, I want to thank everyone all my viewers, all my subscribers for always tuning in to my stream and my YouTube channel. And I also want to give a shout out to Kriparian, who most likely is going to return when Reaper of Souls comes out. So that's it. The glorious return of King Crypt to Diablo 3. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's going to love the changes. It's happening. <laughs> but uh, I should probably do a shout out too, because a lot of your stream viewers that we're currently streaming uh, don't actually know me. But uh, of course, my YouTube subscribers do. But uh, I do the YouTube thing. I can't currently stream due to a crappy Australian internet, but hopefully by Reaper of Souls I will be. Been doing it for about a year, and I just recently, uh, a couple of days ago actually, went full-time YouTube. So uh, if you want some guides, 
Diablo 3, Path of Exile, those sorts of games. Cool games, the good ones. Uh, I cover that on my YouTube. Ziggy D Starcraft is the URL for that. Or you can just go to ZiggyD.TV, my website, and find all that info. So uh, thanks for having uh, me on your stream, Aldrin. Thanks for coming on my YouTubes. Pretty fun stuff. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah that's good maybe interview. we'll uh, do some more on some other topics sometime in the future. Sure. Alrighty, man. I'll see you later. All right. Have a good day. Bye. Cheers. Uh, gold and gear inflation is pretty huge at the moment, so it's going to be really cheap if you want to prepare and get back into the game ready for Reaper of Souls. If you do want to go the uh, not farming crazy amount and instead just throw a couple dollars at the game, I think maybe like 3 to $5 per class will be enough to get you up and running, uh, good enough to get into Reaper of Souls. And actually, I don't recommend spending more than that. I don't recommend getting MP10 uh, gear for your character unless you want to go uber hardcore because...